All right, hi everyone. So in a couple of previous videos, we took a look at how to use uh, the J shell, the Java shell, and uh, straight up regular IntelliJ with print statements to uh, develop a, a, a method for swapping elements in an array. But we can also use something called JUnit, which allows you to sort of scale up your testing uh, for bigger projects and to be more robust and, and rigorous in, in your testing and that. And I'll show you how to do that uh, with the same exercise in JUnit. So create new project. So we're going to go next. So we're using JDK 14. We're going to say um, my swap test with JUnit. This is what um, we're going to call the project. And then inside of the project, we are going to create a new class. Okay. And, uh, and so this class, we're going to call, um, let me see, we're going to call it, whoops, hold on, my array functions. We'll, we'll imagine that there could be many array functions or methods that we could put in here. All right, so I got my class right here. And inside of my class, I want to uh, create a method. So we're going to say public static void, and we're going to call it a swap array. And swap array, we're going to pass in a reference to an array, um, some array that will be defined elsewhere. And we're going to pass that in, and we're going to say that uh, we want to swap out one element in the array with another element in the array. So we're going to refer to the first one as uh, the index i, and the second one is going to have the index j like that. And so I open the curly brace right there. And so now what I do is I'm going to have a temporary variable temp value is equal to zero. And this is going to be used for doing the swapping. And now I'm going to say, um, let me see, we call it the, the array. So uh, temp value is equal to the array. And we're going to pass in the value from index i into that temporary variable. So we're going to, we're going to save it, put it aside so that it doesn't get wiped out. All right, now we're going to say the array at position i, we're going to make it equal to the value of the array at position j. All right, just like that. And now we've now moved, well, we've copied um, the value for the array at position j, and we now can overwrite it at position j because we've put it into position i. So we're going to say uh, the array at position j is equal to temp value. All right, so now this is the entire uh, thing that we need to do, the entire method that we need to do in order to make this swap thing work. And it, it should work. So um, let me see. So now we're going to save that. And now I am going to import JUnit from Maven. We're using Maven. So we're libraries here, plus from Maven, I'm going to say J unit. I'm going to do a search for it. And there's a whole lot of different variations of J unit that people use. We're going to use the uh, uh, straight up J unit, which you have to search for. It's down here somewhere. J unit. So J unit, J unit 4.13.1. There we go. And we just hit the defaults. Okay, okay, okay. And now it's incorporated in. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create our JUnit test. Okay, so we go in here and we're going to make a new class. So we go like this, class like that, and we are going to call this test swap array JUnit, like that. All right, and let's see now. We want to do import org JUnit.test, like that import static org dot j unit dot assert. Okay, so basically we want the test framework in here and we, we need to have the assert uh, family of, of methods in that as well because we, we're going to use um, uh, assert equals or assert array equals to uh, compare two different arrays to make sure that they're equal to one another as they should be. All right, so now we're going to go and we say at test. Okay. And if you haven't imported a J unit, when you do that at test, it, it won't work. Okay. So we, but now it will. So pub public like that void 
test one. We can have multiple tests. And like that. And we go int array. So this is going to be the original array. array. Let's go um, original array. It is equal to one, two, three, four, and five. So we're just we're populating it with values. And this is what's going to be passed into the, the method that we created over here. So this is the method swap array, okay, in class my array functions. So right here, we're going to do my array functions dot. What was it? It was swap array. Okay, so we got swap array, and we're going to pass in original array like that. And let's see what else we're going to swap. Let's see, we're going to swap the value at position zero, and we're going to swap for the value at position one like that. Okay, now we also need to have uh, expected or changed array. And if we're going to do a swap of 0 and 1, then what we should end up seeing is 2 gets into the 0 position and 1 goes into the other position, 3, 4, 5, like that. Like so. And then what we do is we use the, the um, uh, cert array equals, and it's going to be, let me see, the expected one. That's the changed, changed array. And we want the original array, like that. All right, and that should do it. Now, why is that still red? There. Okay. So my array functions, swap array, so it now recognizes it. And that's the original array. I swap position zero with position one. And that should be good. So I now save it. And uh, let's just make sure that it, it runs. So here we go. I'm going to run test one. And what you'll see is a little sort of sub window down at the bottom of the screen that will um, show you the result of the test. And if the test passed, and it'll, it'll run all the tests you want. If the test passed, it'll put a little check mark. So in this case, we got a good test. So it worked. That's fantastic. Now, let's imagine for a moment that uh, I had a problem in my uh, original method. So let's say I, I goofed and I, I, um, I don't know. Let's add a value in here. Like This shouldn't have been here. It's a typo. Okay, but, but let's imagine that I've got something in here. And so if I go back into my test setup, really when I'm doing the swap, if I swap the 0 and 1 index positions, this is the result. This, this, the array should look like this. If I'd written the method correctly. So I hit the run button. So I'm running my test. And this should turn from a check mark to a cross. There, like that, an X. Okay, so the test, which you can see is correct, is showing that the original method is incorrect. And I didn't use any print statements or anything like that. Um, and so, so the JUnit test framework allows you to verify that your method worked as expected. Now, for a little project like this, it, it takes a little bit of setup to do, and, and, and it's a debate whether or not doing the simple print statements is more effective or not. But as your project scales up, as it becomes bigger and bigger, and more people become involved, creating these test frameworks, these um, test regimes, these test rigs, from a mechanical perspective, you know, often we'll, we'll build a test jig or a test rig in order to, to test a mechanical piece or an electrical piece. This is the same thing, but in software. And so this scales up really, really well. You can see it's pretty straightforward to do. 
And once you do it, the, the bigger your methods become, the more complex your project becomes, the more this becomes a, a valid and valuable uh, tool in your toolbox. All right, take care, everyone.